What is going on you guys, Mr. Per here back again, hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day as always. This was a really requested fan fiction, so I'm really happy to do it and I just want to say we've been doing fan fictions for an entire year, so this is the anniversary. I'm really happy how it's been turning out and it's just been a wild ride guys. I just want to thank everybody for, you know, submitting their fan fictions and it's just been crazy. But anyways guys, let's jump right into this. What if events went differently? What if Spider-Man became a criminal and didn't start a life of fighting crime? What would have happened? What would have changed? Find out in this fan fiction. He came home after the events of Uncle Ben's death and told Aunt May everything that happened. Events would play out the same like our original timeline, but this time Peter would not only take down criminals at first, but he would end up killing criminals. He would then go into an alleyway in the original timeline asking for questions, but only one event would change all, and he had web shooters in his vigilante suit earlier. He would walk up to the criminals and he would start punching him to death, shouting for answers, but it wasn't the right guy. More thugs would come in for his aid, but Peter would kill the guy in front of the group and they would try hopping the fence, but Spider-Man would end up using his webs so they couldn't leave. He would make a deal with them and he said, if you want to live and not end up like this, you're going to work for me and find this man for me and he ended up giving a wanted list to them saying that you know you guys have to find this guy and someone would yell no and shoot but he would end up dodging it and he used his webs to grab the guy and he ended up grabbing his neck and lifting him up in the air and smashed his head into a dumpster he was completely dead he was done and he would hear sirens spider-man would hear something in the background something was coming closer and closer and then a cop car would be in the alleyway and there'd be two cops and it would be Captain Stacy and another cop and they would tell him to put his hands in the air and he didn't say anything. He just did a backflip knocking him to the ground and the other cop would try running after him to take him down but Peter dodged it and crawled up a wall and then he used his webs it wrapped around his neck and he ended up breaking the guy's neck. He was dead and then Captain Stacy would try shooting at him but he would dodge every bullet and Peter would take one thug and he ended up crawling up a wall and he told him to find people to find this guy and that they would meet near another rooftop tomorrow night and he yelled go and then they both ended up splitting up and spider-man would end up swinging away and he looked at his hands and he couldn't believe there was blood on his hands and he knew it after this night there was no turning back captain stacy would go and tell the rest of the police officers that spider-man was public enemy number one and that he had murder on his hands so in this timeline Captain Stacy ends up naming Spider-Man. Peter would find his uncle's killer and then he would kill him at a warehouse, beating him to death, kicking him through a glass window, and the guy ended up falling to his death. Events would play out the same, but this time, Peter would not only have not saved people anymore at the bridge, and people would have died at the bridge, even that kid in the car with his dad. And he heard it on the news, but he didn't care. Spider-Man would even be well known for murdering people, and he would start robbing people on the streets at night, leaving them for dead sometimes for the cops. He would know the lizard was out there, but he never really thought of stopping him. He thought he was helping him because Spider-Man was able to pull off robberies, and he was able to get Aunt May enough money to move out of her house and move into another house. He thought this was a way better life than he could ever imagine. He could take what he wanted when he wanted. He would still go with Gwen in this timeline, but he wouldn't tell her that he was Spider-Man because he knew if he ended up telling her that she would blame him for killing all those people. So he would keep a secret until the lizard would go and start attacking people at Midtown High. Now in the original timeline, he would do it because Peter was Spider-Man and he ended up finding out, but he's only doing it in this timeline because he wants to use Gwen to get supplies for him in the sewer to steal from Oscorp. So Peter would end up getting to Gwen in this time and she would end up finding out that he was Spider-Man. He ended up having to leave because of this and he was exposed for it. He was on the wanted list and Aunt May would end up finding out and she was like completely broken when she found out that he was Spider-Man. Days later, the lizard would have Gwen on top of the Oscorp Tower and Peter during this time would be 
in a warehouse with thugs on a couch and they would be watching TV and he was pretty much depressed and everything and he knew that he, you know he had to save Gwen from the lizard the lizard had Gwen he would leave the warehouse and start swinging to the tower he knew he had to go in the shadows because the cops were everywhere and they were going to find him they could even shoot him on sight Peter at this time was very depressed and he knew he ended up having to do something good in his life. He still loved Gwen and he didn't want to see her get killed. He would make it there and the cops started shooting at him and the lizard. Peter in this timeline would still find out that Dr. Connors was the lizard and he would yell at him to stop what he was doing and that he was going to get both of them killed. Gwen would be crying saying she tried to get a cure. Peter wouldn't know what was going on because he was gone for so long that the lizard's plans, it would all become new to him at that moment. Then he realized that he had to do this quick because he didn't have enough time. He then realized what was going on to do a swinging kick to the lizard, but the lizard would use his tail to kick him back, and Spider-Man would use all of his momentum and use his webs and get the lizard, and the lizard would end up dropping Gwen and she would start to fall. Spider-Man used his webs, but it wasn't enough. She would end up dying during the fall, and Peter would start crying. He failed. He knew it was over, and he ended up ripping his mask off, and you could see in his eyes that there was pure hatred, and he would scream, and Captain Stacy would end up shooting the lizard, buying him some time to get up to the Oscorp building, and Spider-Man would do a swinging kick back, and the lizard would end up dodging it, stabbing Peter in the gut, and then he would be thrown down, and Peter would look, to see Captain Stacy get thrown off a building and he knew he failed. He ended up blacking out and the whole city ended up turning green when the lizard ended up putting the serum in there. And that's where we're going to end our fan fiction. So what do you guys think about this really dark fan fiction? Let me know in the comments down below. I can't believe it's been an entire year that we've been doing this. It's really crazy. But anyways, as always, thank you for tuning in. Do make sure to end up requesting your fan fictions in the comments down below. And do make sure to subscribe, like, share, and I'll see you guys in the next video.